We've already seen that dropping an altitude from the right angle in a triangle down to the hypotenuse produces two smaller triangles that are not only similar to each other, they're also similar to the triangle that we started with. And in particular, we saw that in the form of the theorem that if an altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse, then the two resulting triangles are similar to the original and each other. The diagram that we used in that video gave us that triangle ACB, our original triangle, was similar to triangle ADC as well as to triangle CDB. And what this video is going to do is go through the consequences of those triangles being similar and derive some formulas that are going to allow us to calculate the lengths of the new segments that are created, CD, BD, and DA. So first, let's focus on the altitude CD. Now CD is a part of two of the triangles. CD is a part of triangle ADC, in which it is the long leg, and is also a part of triangle CDB, where it is the short leg. So now using that information, let's set up the ratios of the long to the short legs in those triangles and see what we can come up with. This is one of the ways that we can find lengths of segments when we don't specifically have something that they're necessarily congruent to. We can do these explorations with similar triangles and the ratios and proportions that they uh, create to help us find other ways of calculating segment lengths. So in this case, let's make the ratio long over short. So in triangle ADC, the long leg is CD, which is what we want, and the short leg is AD. And in the slightly larger triangle, triangle CDB, we have that the long leg, again, we have to start with the same leg in each case. We just can't put CD uh, in the numerator there. The long leg is actually BD, and the short leg is CD which means using cross products to solve this proportion for CD, we can see that this actually sets up a geometric mean even though the order of our fractions are slightly different. So here it gives us that CD squared is equal to AD times BD, or that CD itself, the length of that altitude, is actually the square root of AD and BD which are the two segments of the leg that CD cuts the hypotenuse into, or rather two seg the two segments of the hypotenuse that CD cuts. And that is an important corollary to the theorem that we saw, corollary being something easy that can be shown using the theorem that we had before. So this corollary says if the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the length of that altitude is the geometric mean between the segments of the hypotenuse. That is, if CD is the altitude from right angle C, then its length is the square root of BD times DA. Go ahead, pause the video, copy this down. We'll do a quick example and then move on to two more explorations. So what this means is that if we wanted to find the length of CD, let's call it X, and we knew that DA was 3 and BD was 6, then CD or X would be equal to the square root of 3 times 6 or the square root of 18 which is 3 square root of 2. That really is it. We just plug in the lengths that we know. This also gives us a way to calculate either BD or DA if we know the length of the altitude and we know the length of one of those two segments of the hypotenuse, but not the other, simply by plugging it into the formulas and solving for our unknown value. Now, let's try solving for something different that is also a part of those two triangles. In this case, let's take a look at the legs of the original right triangle, and we'll start with CD, or CA, rather. We've already looked at CD. So CA is the hypotenuse of the small triangle, but it is the short leg of the triangle that we started off with, triangle ACB. So here we're going to create a ratio that involves the short leg and the hypotenuse. Well, the two triangles that have AC as a part of them are ACB. This is one where it's the short leg, as well as ADC, which is where it's the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead 
and set up those ratios again. Short over hypotenuse, starting with the uh, larger triangle, ACB. The short leg there is AC. The hypotenuse is AB. In triangle ADC, again, keeping it consistent, the short leg is AD and the hypotenuse is AC. As you can see, once again, we end up with a geometric mean here because when we use cross products to solve this proportion for AC, we end up with an AC squared. And in this case, AC squared is AB times AD or AC is the square root of AB times AD. Now, this is slightly different from what we saw before where it's not the geometric mean of the two pieces of the hypotenuse. In this case, AC is the geometric mean of this close piece of the hypotenuse, AD, along with the entire hypotenuse, AB, which is an interesting thing in and of its own right. Now let's see if the same is true with BC. And if the same is true with BC, then we can say that this is a corollary and an important result. So AC, or rather BC, is a part of two of the triangles, ACB, and CDB. In ACB, our original triangle, BC is the long leg, and in CDB, one of the smaller triangles, BC is the hypotenuse. So as before, let's set up those ratios so that we have long leg over hypotenuse. In triangle ACB, the long leg is BC and the hypotenuse is AB. In triangle CDB, the long leg is BD, and the hypotenuse is BC. Once again, we have a proportion where the means are BC and the extremes are AB and BD. So therefore, using that same process as before, we get that BC is equal to the square root of AB and BD. Again, one where it is the geometric mean of the segment of the hypotenuse that is cut by the altitude with the entire hypotenuse. So that leads us to this particular corollary where we see that if the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, each leg is the geometric mean of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. So AC is AB times AD. BC is the square root of AB times BD. Go ahead, pause the video, copy all of this down on the page, uh, come back to see an example problem as well as some practice problems for you to work on. So let's see how this works in practice. In this triangle here, which is meant to be a right triangle, poorly drawn because I hand drew it, but let's ignore that, uh, we want to find the lengths of the legs of the right triangle as well as the length of the altitude h. So in order to do that, we just go back through those two formulas that we have. The length of the altitude is the geometric mean of the pieces of the hypotenuse, and the length of the legs is the geometric mean of the full hypotenuse with the segment of the hypotenuse that's closest to it. So h I'll start with h, is the geometric mean of 3 times 7, the two pieces of the hypotenuse, which means that h is the square root of 21. a is the geometric mean of the close segment of the hypotenuse with the entire hypotenuse. So that is the square root of 3 times the length of the entire hypotenuse, 10, not 7, segment is 7 is one of the segments, to give us that a is the square root of 30. And finally, b is the geometric mean of the close section of the hypotenuse with the entire thing. So that is the square root of 7 times 10, or the square root of 70. None of these can be simplified, so those are the lengths of the altitude and the two legs of this right triangle. So what I'm going to ask you to do is for the next three problems, you're going to pause the video at the start of them. There's one per slide and calculate the missing segment lengths. When you're ready to see the process and the answer and to check your work, you're going to unpause the video and move on. So here is the first triangle that you're going to work with. Very similar to what we had before. Go ahead, pause the video, calculate the lengths of X, Y, and Z. Come back when you're ready to see the answer and move on. So again, we just use the formulas that we had before. X, which is the altitude, is 
the geometric mean of the two segments of the hypotenuse that it cuts into. So that's 4 times 25, which is the square root of 100, which gives us 10. Now, as before, when we're dealing with square roots, we're really only interested in the positive values of the square roots, particularly because we're dealing with actual physical lengths here. Um, in other circumstances, we would consider the fact that negative 10 squared is also 100, but here it doesn't make sense for the actual length of an altitude to be negative 10 units, whatever that is. So most times in geometry, we ignore the negative possibility for the root and only focus on the positive, and that happens in a lot of other areas in math too. For y, we have that y is the geometric mean of the short part of the, hypo of the, part of the hypotenuse that's close to it, and the entire hypotenuse, so that is the geometric mean of 4 times 29. Go straight to simplifying, square root of 4 is 2, so that's 2 root 29. And z is the geometric mean of the close part of the hypotenuse to it, as well as the entire hypotenuse. So z is equal to the square root of 25 times 29. As we've seen, it's helpful to keep it like this when we're starting to simplify, because the square root of 25 is 5. Square root of... 29, because 29 can't be simplified. So that's the answer for the first one. Go ahead, pause the video, work on this uh, right triangle here. Again, find the values of x, y, and z. Come back and resume the video when you're ready to check your work, see the process, and then go on to the last problem. So here are some very familiar processes. x is the geometric mean of the two segments of the hypotenuse. Square root of 9 is 3, so x is 3 root 7 y is the geometric mean of the segment of the hypotenuse that's closest to it as well as the entire hypotenuse so that is the geometric mean of 9 and 16 which square root of 9 is 3 square root of 16 is 4 and overall then y equals 12. and then for z we know that z is the geometric mean of the length of the segment of the hypotenuse that's closest to it, as well as the entire hypotenuse. So z is equal to square root of 7 times 16. Square root of 16 is 4, so that is 4 square root of 7. One more triangle for you to work on. Go ahead, pause the video, find the missing values here. You will notice that there are a different series of things miss missing. Still things that we can solve for, but different than we saw before. Pause the video, work out the values of x, y, and z. Come back when you are ready to see the answers, and then end the video. So in this case, we can't really start with the length of the altitude. That's where we started before, but in those cases, we knew the two lengths of the segments that the altitude was cut into by the altitude, by that the segments of the hypotenuse was cut into by the altitude. In this case, we know the length of the hypotenuse and the length of one of the legs, but we don't know the segments or the altitude. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you could go through this in theory, but the easiest way to start is to say that 9, which is this leg, is the geometric mean of the close segment of the hypotenuse, which is x, and the entire length of the hypotenuse, which you happen to know, times 15. So now we square both sides, and we get 81 is equal to 15x. Divide by 15 to get 81 fifteenths. We divide by 3 to get 27 fifths as the value for x. We can have fractional and decimal lengths for segments after all, so even though this is uh, a bit more unwieldy to work with than integers are, it is still totally fine. Knowing that, we can go about finding y by simply just saying y must then be 15 minus 27 fifths. Since 15 is 75 fifths, because 15 times 5 is 75, we end up with y being 48 over 5. And now, in order to find the length of z, it is just the geometric mean of the two segments of the hypotenuse that it is the altitude cuts the hypotenuse into. So z is equal to the square root of 27 over 5 times 48 over 5. 
Now we're going to do a little bit of reshuffling of these factors and uh, some of how we multiply 27 times 48 uh, because it's going to give us a way to simplify this easier. So 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, and 48 is 16 times 3, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. But we're going to rewrite that as this is 5 squared, 9 times 3 for 27, then 3 times 16 for 48. What does that mean? Well, the square root of 9 is 3. We have two 3s here. 3 times 3 is 9. That means we have another 3. And square root of 16 is 4. Similarly, in our denominator, we have 25 or 5 squared. So our denominator is going to end up being 5. And our numerator is going to be 3 times 3 times 4. That is 9 times 4, or 36. So z is 36 over 5. Notice that the numerator here, because the denominators are the same, 36 is the geometric mean of 27 and 48, which gives us yet another way to calculate it. So as a quick review, knowing that an altitude is dropped from the right angle to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, we can calculate the legs of the original right triangle as well as the length of the altitude using the geometric means of the segments and the hypotenuse in some combination cut by the altitude. The length of the altitude is the geometric mean of the segments, and the length of each leg of the triangle is the geometric mean of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse cut by the altitude that is closest to that leg.